Hello everyone, my name's Angela Cayley. Um, I've been a groomer for 50 something years. Um, today I'm going to hand strip Schmiegel, a miniature schnauzer. I'm going to uh, start by doing some clipper work on him. It's very minimal clipper work. I'll be clipping between the back legs and his sanitary area. I'll be clipping his ears and his cheeks. The top of his head I'll strip. I'll clip down here to his breastbone and the rest will be stripped. It's important when you clip the snouts' chest that you don't clip right the way down and hollow the chest out because this is what happens. He'll look, he'll have a, a U-shape there. We ne he needs to have some fore chest. So what we do is we clip this area and then scissor this and blend it. So I'm using a number 7F with very great care under the throat. I'm going up against the layer of coat. I'm not clipping into this area where the coat changes direction because I'm going to blend there. Right, on the head, it's just clipping the cheeks and leaving the top of the skull. When you hand strip, this always looks nicer if it's stripped rather than clipped. So I'm going to clip the cheeks from the corner of the eye in a straight line all the way down. You don't go forward into the face. You don't go down to the corner of the, of the mouth like you would on a wire fox terrier, for instance. Okay, that's the, the face and the neck. I'm next going to clip his ears. And for that, I'm going to use a number 15 blade. I could use a 30 blade. But it can be quite severe. If you're, if you're just learning to groom snouts, I would always say be cautious. You can always take a little more off. Clip with the coat on the ear. Don't ever clip against it. You can catch the edge of the ear. That leaves a nice velvety finish. Right, I'm now going to do the inside of the ears and I'm using a, quite a short blade on the inside. I'm clipping towards the edge of the ear. Make sure no hair drops down the ear channel as well because that can cause an irritation. going to tidy around the edge of the ear with my scissors. Now, you can use smaller scissors, which are probably a little safer. I know what I'm doing. I've got slightly longer scissors, but I am only using the tip of my scissors. 
and I'm going along the very edge, working from the base up to the tip. Just using the tips of my scissors, nothing more. Base to tip. The hair runs that way, so if you trim that way, it's unlikely you'll have an accident with the scissors on the edge of the ear. If you trim the other way from, from tip to base, the scissors can be drawn into the ear and can cut the edge. Do the same on the other ear. All right, if any of you are going to be um, doing your exams, and I'm sure a lot of you will be, whether it's City and Guilds or ICMG, my advice to you is organise yourself and don't have a lot of hair and equipment on your table when you're working. It really isn't very efficient, doesn't look very good, and it, it stops you seeing your work properly. Okay, I'm going to now clip either side of the upper thigh, this area which is called the butterfly, and um, just up around his little bits and pieces. Clip with care. Okay. And rather than pull the leg up, the back leg, because that can be painful for them, I lift them. And now I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to take a little bit of hair away in front of his penis so that he doesn't wee all over, his, all over himself. Okay. Right, I'm just going to clip inside his pads. Uh, just take the hair out because they get mud, they can get gravel, all sorts of things inside the feet. Right, I'm now going to go and clip the other, the other three feet. When, you, when you're doing a dog's feet, this is the other thing that I, I do see an awful lot of. People struggling with picking up a, a, a foot. If you put your arm underneath the dog and lift the foot up, you've, you've got, it's not going to be sitting because you've got control of the back end. now do the other feet. Okay, hand stripping um, a snouts coat requires you to have either some finger cots if you're going to pull the coat by finger and thumb or a good quality stripping knife that isn't sharp, it mustn't cut the coat, which if it's used correctly is absolutely fine. Finger and thumb is, is if you're doing a show dog, is the best way to strip a coat. But providing you're careful when you use a knife, you should get a good finish. And this is a blending knife, a shorter knife to blend the areas like the neck into the shoulder, the back end, just where all, uh, at the top of the head, just general blending. Okay, uh, this powder helps you to get a grip of the coat. You can use chalk, I use this, 
There's no difference really, as long as you can get it out afterwards. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get him to lay down to be stripped. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Lie down. Lie down. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Once he relaxes, I should be able to start work. Good boy. Okay, I'm starting at the back end. I'm stretching the skin with my left hand and just gently pulling the coat. I'm not forcing anything to come out. I'm holding the knife at that angle. I don't want to scrape or scratch the skin. And I'm just pulling, put, using my thumb to hold on to the hair and pulling gently. Hand stripping a coat is the removal of dead coat. Now, on a wiry coated dog, like a schnauzer, or any terrier with a wiry coat, it helps to maintain the quality of the coat. It keeps the coat the correct texture, which in turn keeps the correct colour. If you cut the hair, what happens is the, the hair in the follicle uh, gets softer and softer. Uh, and the undercoat, because these dogs do have an undercoat, and the top coat all become soft. The coat is thin, the hair shaft is thinner, and the colour bleeds. So you end up with a grey dog. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you all know on the salt and pepper snouts that you clip, they get lighter and lighter and you lose the banding on the colour. On a black dog, it's not so obvious, but definitely the texture is affected. Now, you have to say, well, wh why, do we need a, why do we need a good texture? A wiry coat is more weatherproof. It's also less likely to mat up than a soft woolly coat. And I'm sure you'll, you see that on snouts that come in, their legs are often very matted because they, they aren't stripped and the coat on the legs is softer. So it's more prone to tangling. I am. <laughs> you are a ham. Okay. I'm stripping the back leg. It's a little thin there, but that will be that will grow in pretty quickly. It happens when they're lacking undercoat. So from the top of the leg there, I'm stripping down to the, the bottom of the second thigh. So there's the first thigh. There's the second thigh. And I'm stripping, I'm just blending that off at the bottom of the second thigh. Depends on the dog's leg shape, really, as to how low you go. I see some are stripped right down to the hock. It's, it really is up to you where you strip to, but I know we normally say if you can feel where the Achilles tendon joins the lower muscle, that's where we normally strip to. And that's done by just blending into that area. This is all stripped. 
and then this is blended into the leg coat. I like to take a little bit of that leg coat off when I strip to keep the colour and the texture. Now if, if you've got a, a difficult coat to strip, if it's a little bit soft, which is it isn't, but if it's not coming out so easily, you can put a little bit of chalk on the coat or in this case some ear powder and that gives you a better grip. Try and strip in the direction that you want the coat to grow. And for the sake of the coat, and for the sake of the dog's skin, you should really strip in the direction that it grows, because if you try and strip against the growth of the coat, you'll make the dog's skin very sore. I'm stripping the out of the skirt. The skirt goes from just where the arm goes underneath the dog to where we started the back leg. So from there to there. But it isn't a hard line. I also strip into the skirt to again keep the colour and the texture. He can lay down if he wants, he can stand up if he wants, as long as he's comfortable. It's decided it's easier to lay down, I think. Well, I wouldn't strip a coat if it was um, not coming out comfortably. I wouldn't strip a soft coat, a coat that's been previously clipped. If somebody brings a dog into your salon that's clearly been clipped and the coat's soft, then I would say that it's not possible to hand strip it. Um, if somebody brings you a snouter puppy, the sooner they bring them in really, the better to start stripping. Um, as soon as they're over the vaccinations, the breeder may have already started stripping the coat. I know it sounds a bit early to do it, but the sooner you start, the better. Even if it's just taking a little out, getting the dog used to it. Oh, schmiggle. Now, Schmeagel doesn't really have an undercoat. Uh, he's, he's been stripped so many times now that uh, he's, he really doesn't have undercoat anymore. So I'm, I'm hoping I don't strip a bald patch, but if you do, you have to explain to your client that it's possible, if you're going to hand strip the dog, that now and again you may produce See, he's got a small bald patch there and I haven't actually stripped there yet. He's got a small bald patch there. But, you know, um, that's the nature of hand stripping. We always try to get as good a finish as we can to start with. But the beauty of the hand strip is that it looks its best in about two to three weeks after the strip. unless you're lucky enough to be able to roll a coat. Um, now, rolling the coat is where you 
roll the coat in finger and thumb and you just take out the longest hairs and you keep a constant jacket going on the dog. And that's usually done with the show dogs. Um, if people bring you a dog in to, just to strip the coat out, you just do the best you can. Don't make the dog sore. Don't overstrip it and try and get a nice finish. But as I say, you may occasionally get a, a little bald patch. Right, I'm going down the shoulder now to the top of the foreleg. And I'm going to blend at the top of this leg. I don't want to pinch the dog in there. I want to try and fill this in a little bit so we get a straight line down the side of the leg. Just a few bits here and there that I can see. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is um, work on the top line. That's this area here. If you're showing a dog, you would do the neck two or three weeks before you do the jacket, maybe even longer, to, so that you have a nice crest on the dog. This really ideally on a show dog needs to be longer than this and his he actually is longer on his neck than here but i'm stripping him out today so it will be more or less the same length as the rest of him stripping down his neck and then I'm going to come onto his skull. The eyebrows on a snout that go from the eye socket, so don't strip into the eyebrow. Make sure that either if you're clipping it or you're stripping it, you know exactly where you're going to start stripping from, which is the bone there, the bony area, just on the edge of the eye socket. And this goes back to the neck. This area here, I'll blend. Okay, that's that side done. I've just got along there to blend, along there to blend. The scissoring I'll do afterwards. Okay. The blending knife is finer, so it just takes it down a little bit shorter. And I'm blending towards the clipped area. And I'll finish that off with thinning scissors. Get rid of some of the hair. Right, I'll do that area now with the thinners.
just taking the um, just taking the edges off now from where I've blended to make it neat and tidy. On the back end, just need to come down the line between the clipped area and the stripped area just to give a neat straight line. The rest will be scissored. Okay, right. I'm now going to strip the tail. Come on, sweetheart. Good boy. They really, they're not that keen on having the tail done. Don't you any dog is. But just do it as carefully as you can. And it is only the top of the tail you strip. It wouldn't be terribly kind to strip the underneath of the uh, of the tail. I'm going to do that with thinners. Some people clip them. When you're shaping and stripping, just keep looking. Use your brush or comb. Just keep looking at the coat and make sure you've got a nice finish. No bits sticking out anywhere. Try and keep your thumbnail over the end of the tail when you're trimming the end. Just to make sure you don't catch the end of the tail. Okay, this side is stripped. I'm now going to turn around to the other side. Right, I'm going to start trimming the back leg. He's not got a lot of furnishing, but you know, you don't really need a huge amount. It's, it's where you leave it on that's important to give the shape. So I'm just doing a round foot. Um, you need to set the hock quite low. Um, so I'm not going to trim from there down. I'm going to just make that carry on there in a slope to make the hock look slightly further set back. So I'm cutting upwards and outwards. Come put it down, good boy. Trimming this line in. In order to make the back look nice and short, and actually he has got a nice short back, but you don't trim that away. If you take that away there, it makes the back look longer. So that's brought forward into the waist. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, I've picked up the legs so I can see the underneath. So if the legs there, I can't, I can't trim this area here between the front legs. I've always got one hand on the dog when I'm trimming. Um, it's an early warning system. If they're going to move, you can feel them starting to move before they actually do. And it's also for safety. So I have my scissors in my hand. I take my thumb out. I pick up my comb. Comb put the comb down, put my thumb back in. That way, my scissors are never sitting on the table to get knocked off. And um, I've got one hand on the dog all the time. Just trimming around the back of the foot. The idea is you don't have hair hanging on the floor. It's unhygienic and it's going to get into a pickle. So just make sure that all the hair that's touching the ground is trimmed away. Okay, I'm doing this now. How I get around foot is I, I, I trim from the front of the foot, I trim a flat line. This is how I do it. And then I round the foot off. I have my scissors at a slight angle so that the hair underneath is shorter than the hair on top. As I said, there's not a lot of hair on his legs and feet to trim off, but if there were, I would do it exactly the same way. Picking the leg up. I'm cutting this in a, a straight line down the back. And I'm going to come to the front of the leg and the side of the leg. So I'm looking at it from all angles. I'm going to come down here. Trim that. The hair on Snouts' legs tends to drop. So it's, uh, it's often the easiest way is to scissor it downwards. I'm just going over with some blenders. And I'm blending the shoulder in. To have a cylinder shape, but the slightly heavier at the bottom than the top. And looking from the front, that the leg isn't sticking out too much here. I'm actually going to blend that a little bit more. better. If you look at the two front legs now, that one is falling straight. This one is still quite bulky. And yet I haven't taken an awful lot off, but I've taken it off in the right place to get the leg 
to look like a cylinder. Okay, I'm going to blend the chest now. It's not a bib and it's not scooped out between the legs. Like I said earlier, you, you want this to come down and then go under. So he has a full chest. I don't think you can get a proper finish if you use clippers here. I think the best way to do it is to use thinners or blenders. If you clip it, you'll hollow it out. This way you can see what you're taking off and take off just as much as you need to. Okay, I'm now gonna trim the other side. Right, I'm gonna start on the head now. Um, I'm going to leave him nice long eyebrows um, and I'm going to blend this part of the face in where we've clipped to just so that it's tidy. Good boy. Good boy, Schmeckel. Right, doing the eyebrows, part them and take a small amount from between the eyebrows. Come on, baby. Good boy. And just a little bit from in front of the eye, just to keep it tidy so he can see where he's going, basically. Lift the eyebrow up and just take a small amount from above the eye. That again lifts the eyebrow. And then comb it into place. And I find coming from the back of the eyebrow helps. No, no, don't move. He does have one eyebrow slightly shorter than the other. The dogs play with each other. So I'm just going to even that up. I'm going to put a little bit of spray on his eyebrow just to keep it a little bit still while I cut it. Never spray directly onto the face, obviously. Come on.
it's also an idea to comb both eyebrows together so that you can see you've got the right length. more out of the uh, stop area. It used to be said that if you cross your scissors like that, but nobody leaves eyebrows that short these days. Snouts should ha really have a, quite a long eyebrow. They also say about halfway between the stop and the nose. But again, fashion dictates that eyebrows are longer on snouts these days. I think as long as you clear the area under the eye and they can see where they're going, that's okay. And do you know what? I'm not going to take any more off these because you'll all know what I'm going to say to you now. You start cutting and you end up with one eyebrow shorter than the other. So quit while you're ahead. If you can, work from the back forward. I, I, I can see I could take a little more off there and I'm, I'm making my own mistakes here doing it, but um, they're very tricky to do. If you're going to do eyebrows, make sure the phone's not going to ring, somebody's not going to walk in the door because they look with their eyebrows. You're just about to cut and the eyebrows go that way and bingo, you've taken half it off. So try and keep things quiet if you can. Another tip is if they are doing that, you can hold the eyebrow still by putting your hand just above the eyebrow. And it does stop. I mean, he's quite a good boy, but he's a very good boy. Um, but... Uh, some dogs are very fidgety when you're doing their eyebrows. Right. I haven't trimmed this beard because it's been touched by the other dogs. Uh, they should have a natural beard anyway. Um, the only time you would trim it is if it was really, really long. And then the way you do that is by bringing it all forward and trimming it like that and let it fall naturally. But really, he's got nothing to trim off. Um, he could do with a little more. But there you go. I expect he's been playing with puppies, haven't you, Schmegel? Mm -hmm. You've been playing with the babies. Okay, how can you uh, help your customer to keep the dog nice? That's always the biggest question, my or biggest problem. My customer always brings the dog in matted or uh, they can't maintain a hand strip coat. Okay, you can give them a job to do. The dog should come in every four to six weeks for stripping. Um, in the meantime, if they, if you get them a comb and weave a rubber band in it for them, it's safer than giving them a knife. Okay, and they can use this to card through the coat every couple of days. Also, they need to brush and comb the dog every day. So my advice is, Supply them with the right brush and comb. They'll be happy to pay for it. At least they haven't got to go and choose it and then realise they bought the wrong one. So good steel comb and a nice soft brush and I advise them to brush the legs and the face every day. It takes five minutes in the evening when they're sitting down to watch television um, just to brush the coat, and I always say to them, brush the coat in layers. I know I'm teaching you to uh, suck eggs, and you, you know this already, but this is the best way to teach them. 
brush the comb the coat up in layers and then comb it down in layers tell them not to bath ready if he comes and he's muddy leave him to dry and then brush the mud out if they get any mats in the coat which they will from time to time i know what snouts are like put some talcum powder into the mat some baby powder massage it into the mat it's got silicone in it and it will help the mat to slip through the comb so you comb the coat when it's had about half an hour to soak the uh, talcum powder up um, a, a brush first then comb it through and it should get the mats out um, unless they've left it for two weeks and they haven't bothered to groom it but on a daily basis that works very well mm -hmm.